Hello everybody, welcome to the second installment in the game of the week, 1982 season Stratomatic style. Uh, this game is coming from Tiger Stadium, it was played April the 17th on a Saturday, second Saturday game of the week by NBC, Yankees and Tigers. Now of course, I'm posting this midweek because I'm trying, like as I explained in the first video, trying to catch up to the actual date in 2021 so I can kind of sync these together. So the first few of these are going to be two a week versus the one a week. So I'm going to do two a week until we catch up. Probably post this on Wednesday. I'm not sure what day I'm going to post it. The San Diego LA game, of course, posted on Saturday. And so I want to give people a chance to watch that as well. But I'm thinking if I do Saturday and a Wednesday until I get caught up on the calendar and then go to every Saturday only, hopefully that will work out pretty decently. So, we are at Tiger Stadium, and the pitching matchup for today's game for the Tigers is Jack Morris, and for the Yankees, even though he'd be traded to California later in the season, Tommy John. All right, let's look at the starting lineups, and again, as I explained earlier, I do have the Strat PC plus the uh, Diamond Mine PC to give me the rosters on the team as of April 17th for both these teams. So I've got the backups and the bullpens and whatnot. So for the Yankees, let's see who they have on their bench. They got quite a few. They have from the right side Lou Pinella, Dave Winfield, Rick Cerrone, Bucky Dent, who later went to Texas, Bob Watson, who later went to Atlanta. Got one lefty, Oscar Gamble. And then one switch hitter, Larry Milbourne, who later went to Cleveland. That is their bench for today's game. The bullpen for the Yankees, they don't have a whole lot. But again, remember, this is early 80s. They didn't use a whole lot of bullpen guys a lot of the times, particularly when you had veterans like Tommy John and Jack Morris on the mound. They go a lot of innings. So two, two lefties on the bench, or in the bullpen, rather, Rudy May and Shane Raleigh, and two right-handers, George Frazier and the Goose, Goose Gossage. So those are the four bullpen arms the Yankees have available to them. Let's look at the Tigers in their bench. And on the Tiger bench, they have a couple of lefties, Jerry Turner and Richie Hebner. They have one switch hitter, Howard Johnson, and two right-handers, Lynn Jones and Lance Parrish. So that's the, bull the bench for the Tigers they have available. Bullpen, not much. They have... One lefty and three right-handers. The one lefty is Kevin Soche or Saucier or however you pronounce it. And they also have Dave Rosema, Dave Tobik, and their, I guess their pseudo-closer, Elias Sosa or Elias Sosa. So those are the bench and bullpen guys for both teams. Let's look at the starting lineups on the score sheet. We'll just look at it from the score sheet perspective. All right, for the Yankees, leading things off. At second base is Willie Randolph. Batting second is Jerry Mumphrey, followed by Ken Griffey. The DH is Bobby Mercer. Dave Reverings at first. Greg Nettles at third. Roy Smalley at short. Barry Foote, the catcher, and I did have to print him from the Strat PC because he was not carded in the set, so I do have him printed. And then Dave Collins in left. For the Tigers, Chet Lemon in right. Enos Cabell at first, Kirk Gibson in center, Larry Herndon in left, John Walkenfuss the catcher, Tom Brookins at third, Glenn Wilson the DH, Alan Tramont short, and Lou Whitaker at second. A lot of right-handers in Sparky's lineup against the lefty Tommy John. The only lefty for the Tigers is Kirk Gibson, everybody else, and, and Whitaker. The other, the other seven are all right-handed hitters. So Jack Morris, and on the 82 season, Jack Morris was 17 and 16 with a 406 ERA, but he could definitely eat innings. He's got a fatigue of eight on there, so he's he's a, not not a, definitely not stranger to a complete game or to to going deep into a ball game. Willie Randolph will lead things off for the Yankees, and if you notice in this game, no pomp and circumstance. Um, I'm actually recording this game before the other one post. So I don't know if I'm going to get a, a uh, 
copyright strike on that music, so I don't want to delve into that more than one video until I see how it plays out. Um, if they let me do it, then I'll then I'll go back to doing some of that. Maybe not as long, but at least maybe a little bit of intro, maybe about 10 or 15 seconds of intro music just to get in the mood. But otherwise, I don't want to run into any kind of problems. All right, so Willie Randolph against Jack Morris here at Tiger Stadium. April the 17th on a Saturday afternoon. Of course, this is a Wednesday when I'm uploading it because, again, I'm trying to catch up and get up to the... I'm hoping by the time we get to about June 15th, I'm all caught up. So we can sync the June 15th, 2080, uh, 2021 with the June of 1982. All right, so Jack Morris to Willie Randolph. 4-7. Four, 4-7's seven. Four, a ground ball to short. And Alan Trammell right there, one away. Brings up the switch hitting Jerry Mumphrey. It's in center field. Moore 6-6 six, six against a switch hitter by left. It's going to be a one-out walk. So Jerry Mumphrey is aboard. He will be held. Will he try to get a jump? He needs a six to get a jump. So they're going to try it. Walking Foots is a plus two. Morris is a plus one. So you'd add three. So if he can get the jump, but he needs a six. It's the only way he can get a jump is a six. Can't do it. So Mumphrey will hold. And, of course, they will be holding him on first base. Here is Ken Griffey. 2-7 for Griffey. And he, all he's hits in column two, and he found a strikeout at the 2-7 position. So Griffey is out of there. Two down for the DH, Bobby Mercer. Roll for Havoc on Morris, and nothing's happening. Morris to Mercer, 2-5, and that's a fly to right field put away out there by Chet Lemon to end the inning. So nothing doing for the Yankees. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left. We go to the bottom of the first. It is New York nothing, and the Tigers coming to bat. Tommy John on the 82 season combined with the Yankees and California. 14 and 12, 369 ERA. So Tommy John finishing up the warm up tosses. And it'll be Chet Lemon leading things off. He, you know him primarily as a center fielder, but he did play both right and center in 1982. And Kirk Gibson's in center in this game. And he only played center in 1982. So they didn't move Kirk Gibson to right until, you know, 83, 84. So here we go Chet Lemon against Tommy John. 212 for Chet Lemon against a lefty is a single to right field. And one thing I just thought about, I forgot to do ballpark effects or forgot to list them. So let me get the score sheet. Or not the score sheet, but the uh, ballpark sheet. I'm not going to worry about the weather in this game. I'm just going to play it like they have it on the card here for the ballpark season 1982 Detroit one to seven for singles both lefties and righties and for home runs one to 19 so pretty pretty good home uh, hitters park is Tiger Stadium pretty much any home run check is going to be gone so I wanted to get that out of the way before we came up to one of those results the I thought about that because of the Omega there but just didn't want to run into that later on all right, Chet Lemon is an E stealer, but he's still going to be held because he, he's a threat to try to go. And just to be realistic, like I said in the first video, almost teams hold, hold pretty much 95 to 98% of the base runners are on. The only ones that don't get held are the slow running catchers. So I'm going to hold him on. He's certainly not going to go anywhere, but I am going to hold him on. He did steal one base, got caught four times. Um, so I am going to hold him on, but it, you know he's not going to go anywhere. But just to try to be realistic, I'm going to hold him on. All right, so Tommy John, nothing on the Havoc. Here's the pitch to Enos Cabell. John looking for the double play. 1-7. Can't get it. It's a ground ball B, so that's a fielder's choice. As Nettles goes the short way to Randolph for the force. One away, and that's Enos Cabell now, the new runner at first. Now, he can get a jump on a 3 through 6. He's a pretty decent base dealer. Uh, on the 82 season, he stole 15, only caught six times. He's got a jump of 16 if he can get it. John, John is a zero. 
the catcher, Barry Foote, is a minus one. So if he gets the jump, that would be a minus one there to make it 15, minus two for being held to make him a 13. So if he gets the jump, it would be a one to 13. That's, that's good enough to try it. Three through six for a jump. And he gets the jump, but that's a one, though. So one is a potential pickoff. So let me go back and pull this out to make sure. I'm pretty sure when it's a one, it's a potential pickoff or it's a potential wild pitch. Like I said, when you play a lot of games, sometimes you, the finer points, you may end up forgetting some things. So let me just double check this and make sure I get it right. That's the important part. Uh, let's see here. I know it's in here somewhere. Okay, trying to get a jump. I know it's got to be on here. Da, 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 da. Almost positive. I saw it, now I can't find it. Uh, da, da, da. I know it was here, now I can't find it. I may have to pause the video. I'm going to pause the video until I find it in the rule book. And of course, as soon as I pause it, I found it, which kind of the way things go. So it says, if the 20 side dies a one, the runner attempting that lead may be picked off or for the runner's second steal success rating. So Cabell's second success steal rating is a 12. If the number roll is less than equal to that runner's rating, the runner dies back. So if we get a one through 12, he's going to die back safely on the pickoff, but they cannot get the lead. If we roll 13 or higher, Tommy Johns just picked him off. And that's an 11. Boy, that was close to being an 18 there, but that's an 11. So he gets back. He cannot get the jump anymore. So he will stand pat, but he almost got picked off, but not quite. Here's Kirk Gibson. And that is a 5-6 against the lefty. That's a fly to center. Out number two. And that brings up Larry Herndon. Roll for the havoc. Nothing happening. John to Herndon. 6-6 six, six against a right-hander is a fly to right field. And that's put away out there by Ken Griffey. And at the end of one, we got no score from Tiger Stadium. Hope this game does not turn out as wild as the first game. Um, first game went along smoothly until the ninth inning. Then all hell broke loose. But uh, they're going to see about... Hopefully, we'll see about uh, having this game be a little more steady. Here's Dave Revering. He would later get traded to Seattle, I believe. 5-8 against Jack Morris. 1-2 is a triple. 3-20 to is a single. So, Dave Revering, leadoff single. And even though he's an E-stealer, he's still going to be held. They will hold him on. Morris, one chance for a wild pitch and eight. One to eight is a wild pitch. 19, he gets back, or he gets blocked by Walkenfuss. So here's Greg Nettles. One, two, and that's a single to center field. Single to center by Nettles. Reverend doesn't run well, will stop at second base. So runners are at first and second with nobody out for Roy Smalley. Yankees have something cooking here in the second inning. Smalley, the switch hitter. Nothing on the Havoc. 2-7. Seven, 1-3 two seven. is a double, but that's a 4. It just missed it. it. Ends up being a fly to center. For out number 1. So Smalley just missed the double. And now Barry Foote, he's one of these cards that I had to get off the Stratomatic computer. Just printed on regular paper. Using the Snip tool and WordPerfect and Copy Paste and all that good stuff. So there's Barry Foote. He hit 146 and 40 at bats. Uh, we'll roll for the havoc on Morris. Nothing happening. 6-6. Six, six, so it goes off Morris's card anyway. And that's a walk. So Barry Foote will walk, and that loads the bases with one out for the number nine hitter, Dave Collins. Former Tiger. Dave Collins. Infield for the Tigers. He's going to play for the double play. They'll play back early to prevent, hopefully, what they think is a big inning. Morris, 2-10. Fly ball left field B, question mark. Could be a sacrifice fly. 
We'll have to wait and see. But Reverend doesn't run very well. His run rating is an 8. So that's not too good. Left fielder arm, Herndon is a 0. So with that being an 8 and a 0, they're going to hold him up. That's just not deep enough. Just not deep enough, and he doesn't run well enough. They're going to figure that Willie Randolph has better odds of getting a base hit than him tagging up. So with two outs, here's Willie Randolph. Two, a chance for a balk or a pass ball. We're checking the balk rating. Morris has a two balk rating. No balk. So here's Randolph from Morris. Three, six. And Randolph flies to left field to end the inning. So the Yankees leave him loaded. And we go to the bottom of the second, still no score from Tiger Stadium. Tommy John now will face one of the better baseball names in the last 40, 50 some years, John Wackenfuss. I'd say since 1970, it's one of the top 10 names in baseball. Here's John Wackenfuss against Tommy John. 3 9 against the lefties, a ground ball to second. Randolph is there, one away for Tom Brookins. 1-3 for Brookins, and that's a split chance. 1-6 to six is a single, 7-20 to 20 lines at the short. That's a 3. It's a base hit for Tom Brookins. So a single for Tom Brookins. He will be held. Does he have a chance to steal? Eh, not really, but they will hold him. They will hold him on. Roll this Havoc. That's a two chance for a balk or a pass ball. We're checking the pass ball rating to Barry Foote. His pass ball rating is a seven. 17, he blocks it. So here's Wilson. One nine, and that's a damage done. One to 11 is a double. 12, 20 is a single. That's an 18, but it's two stars. And that'll put runners at the corners with only one out as the... Tigers have something cooking here in the bottom of the second. Wilson will be held. He's not a, really a big threat to steal, but he's enough that they have to hold him. Havoc roll, nothing happening. Yankees playing for the double play. They'll give up the run to try to get two outs. 6-5 on Tommy John's card. Ground ball shortstop A, and that will be the double play they were looking for. 6-4-3 to end the inning. Tommy John induced that ground ball double play. And at the end of two innings, we got no score from Tiger Stadium on this Saturday afternoon, April the 17th, 1982. Of course, if you're watching it when I post it, it's actually a Wednesday. And again, if you're watching it several days later, it could be any day. So here is Jerry Mumphrey, switch hitter, walked his first chance. 2-4. And a 1 to 10 to home run for Mumphrey. That's a 17, though. It will be a triple. Jerry Mumphrey, a leadoff triple. How about that? That 2-4 that is tight on his card there. So triple for Mumphrey. He had 10 triples on the year. He had more triples than he had home runs. So he had 10 triples. So he's a third with nobody out. The Tigers will play the infield back. They want to they want to prevent a big inning. They'll give up the one lone run. Nothing on the habit. Here's Griffey. 6-8. 10 against the lefty. Catcher X. Catcher in this case, Wackenfuss, is a 4 E6. 4 and a 10. This could be interesting. A 4 and a 10 for a catcher. 4 and a 10 is a P slash P, and that is a 14, and he's an E6. 14 and E6 is an E1. It's the only error spot there. Or six, it's a 14 as an error. So let's see on the P slash P under an error. Batter hits a squib out in front of the plate and the catcher can't handle it. One base error. Runners advance, one base. So that will score the run as Walkenfuss was trying to get out there and catch Mumphrey coming to the plate, but he couldn't get a handle on it. And it will be a base hit for Ken Griffey. Yankees lead it one to nothing. And now Griffey. Might get a chance to steal here. Needs a four or a six to get a jump. Nine, he can't get the jump. So Griffey will stay in pat. He will be held. And the DH, Bobby Mercer, is up. Yankees lead it one nothing here in the top of the third. Morris, six-four against the lefty. 
Fly ball center field X. That's Kirk Gibson. He's a 3 E3. 3 and a 10, he'll get to that. E3 and a 6 shouldn't be a problem. It is not. You have to have a 16, 3, or an 18 to make an error. And a 3 E10 is an F2, so no problem whatsoever. As Gibson puts away the fly out by Mercer, one away for Dave Revering. Nothing on the Havoc. Morris to Revering, 3 4. That's a walk. A lot of walks there for Revering, and he found one. So that puts runners at first and second. And again, a shaky start here for Morris. Did all right in the first. The last last inning and this inning have been shaky. Runners at first and second with one out, one run in. Pitch to Greg Nettles. 5 10. That's a ballpark single check. 1 to 7. And that's a 13, so that will be a line out to second base. So two down as the Yankees. Or the Tigers rather catch a break on that. Two outs for Roy Smalley. Four six, switch hitter batting left, four six, ground ball to first, and that'll be handled over there by Enos Cabell to end the inning. But the Yankees jump out on top, one nothing. Jerry Mumphrey triple and a Ken Griffey single, and they lead it one to zip. Tommy John out. We'll be facing Lou Whitaker, followed by Lemon and Cabell. So Whitaker, Lemon, and Cabell do up for the Tigers as they try to tie this game up or else take the lead. 2-4 for Whitaker against the lefty. Will be a leadoff walk, and that's usually a good start. Get guys on base. Let's see. Yankees. Barry Foote's a minus one. Well, he's got a six. He can get a jump on a six. Now can't get the jump, so Whitaker will. Whoops, Whitaker will have to hold. With that, he will have to hold, and that'll bring up Chet Lemon. Of course, he will be held on as well. So Chet Lemon, the batter. One nine for Lemon against a lefty. That's a fly to center. One away. As Lemon is retired, it brings up. Enos Cabell, nothing on the 20. 2 5 for Cabell against the lefty. One is a triple, two to 20 is a single. That'll be a single, two stars. And that'll put runners at the corners for the Tigers with only one out. Enos Cabell needs a three through six to get a jump. He cannot. That's a one. Chance for a pickoff. Again, same thing we just had earlier. 1 to 12, he gets picked off. I'm sorry, 1 to 12, he gets back. 13 or higher, he gets picked off. Nope, he gets back. So Cabell gets back and he'll stay put. Runners at the corners with one out for Kirk Gibson. Yankees playing for the double play. They will play back for the double play. 2 4. That's a ground ball C. That'll get the run home. Kirk Gibson grounds it to Randolph. His only play was the first. Cabell will go to third, uh, to second rather, and Whitaker crosses the plate to tie the score to run a piece. RBI ground out for Kirk Gibson. So Gibson's RBI grounder has tied it. Cabell's at second. He will be held. Nothing on the havoc. Here's the pitch to Herndon. One three ground ball to first again. Not again. He went to second last time. So. Ground ball handled over there by Revering to end the inning, but the Tigers match the Yankees with a run. We go to the fourth, tied at one. Jack Morris back out, and he'll be facing Barry Foote. Foote walked his first chance. 3-6 for Foote. That is a strikeout. Barry Foote out on strikes. Brings up Dave Collins. And many times when they play these Saturday games, you do get the backup catcher because the starting catcher had started the night before and they usually play the backups a lot. So that's why Barry Foote and Walkenfuss are catching instead of having uh, Lance Parrish and Rick Sarone catch. That's the reason for that. Here's Dave Collins. 5'11", switch hitter. 5'11", a ballpark single. 
One to seven, but that's a 17, so he's going to line it to second base, out number two. So the ballpark good for the home runs, but not quite as good for the singles. And that'll send up Willie Randolph. 2-8 for Randolph, and he's going to get a single. Two-out single for Willie Randolph. He's looking to get a jump. Two through six, he will get that jump. Nine, he can't. So Randolph will hold. Here's Mumphrey. He tripled his last time up. Morris trying to be more careful this time. 3-7. He does. The fly to center. Ends the inning. We go to the fourth. Bottom of the fourth, rather. Tied it. A run apiece. Tommy John has a fatigue of seven. Jack Morris has a fatigue of eight. So that's why you don't need a whole lot of bullpen guys. Because you turn over to your starter and say, go for it. And they take care of it. All right, here's Walkenfuss. Walkenfuss grounded to second his first chance. 6'10", and he will fly to center, but it's a chance out there for the center fielder, Mumphrey. He's a 3-E-7. So a tough chance for Mumphrey on a 3-E-7. 3-8, I believe he will get to that. 3-8 he does, and the E-7 and the 6 is not a problem. So Mumphrey handles a tough chance and makes the catch one away. Brings up Tom Brookins, third baseman, and he singled his first chance. 3-4 against the lefty John. He will ground it to Greg Nettles. Two down for Glenn Wilson. He is the designated hitter. 5-11 against John. Struck him out. Rare strikeout. John doesn't strike out a lot, but he got one right there. And at the end of four... It is one to one. Rolling along just like we did in the first game with the Dodgers and Padres, but I don't want to jinx it because if you saw the first game, you know what happened. All right, here's Ken Griffey. It's Morris, 6 3. Fly ball, left field X, left fielder for the Tigers he is Larry Herndon. He's a 2 E6. 2 and 18 is not a problem. E6 and a 13. For a left fielder, 14's an error, but not a 13. So good play for Larry Herndon. As Griffey is retired, brings up the DH, Bobby Mercer. 2-9, and that's a fly to center field. Easy play for Mr. Gibson. Two down for Jave Revering. Whoop, didn't roll the D20. Didn't roll the D20. Not bad. Try that again. 1-7 for Reverend. He flies to center to end the inning. So three easy flyouts, and it's a quick 1-2-3 inning for the Yankees. We go to the bottom of the fifth, still tied at one apiece. Tommy John will be facing the bottom of the order, Trammell and Whitaker, and then Chet Lemon. 6-9, and that's damage done there for Tommy John. 1-3 to three is a homer, 4-20 to 20 is a double. That's a 16. It'll be a double for Alan Trammell, leadoff double. Tigers have something going. Trammell will have to be held at second base. Roll for the Havoc. One chance for a wild pitch. Seven or less is a wild pitch. Nope, 20. He got, got blocked out there by Barry Foot. Foot got his foot in front of it, I guess. Here's Whitaker. 2-6. And that's a single to left. There is no... There's an Omega, but that's not in the play yet. It's a single to left field, but with nobody out... They're going to hold Trammell at third base. So runners are at the corners with nobody out. Lou Whitaker has a six to get a jump. Let's see if he can get a jump. He cannot. So he will hold. He will be held at first. Runners at the corners and nobody out. Yankee infield again playing for the double play. They want to get two outs. They'll trade a run to get two outs. Four, eight. Ground ball third base B. And I'm pretty sure it's just going to be a standard fielder's choice with the run scoring, but I will consult this chart. So third base B with runners at the corners. The B is a seven. Batter safe lead. Wait a minute. This is, I'm sorry, infield in. Uh, first and third, it's a four. Batter safe runner on first going to second. Force play, other runners advance. So the runner at home would have been out having been playing in, but you also take the chance of allowing a single to get through. So you got to weigh your options. It will be a fielder's choice RBI ground out for Chet Lemon as Trammell scores. And the Tigers take a 2-1 lead. Whitaker is out 
five to four. So one out with Chet Lemon, the runner at first. He needs a five through nine to get a jump. I'm sorry, a five or a five, he gets to jump. Nine through 12, he's going to be out trying. So he's not going to try anything. He will be held, but he's not going to try anything. Not going to take that chance. There's the Havoc. Nothing happening. Here's Cabell. Tommy John, 1-4 to Cabell. 1-16 to is a single, but that's an 18, which is a line out to third. Nice play by Nettles to save a base hit. Two down, and that brings up Kirk Gibson against Tommy John. Gibson's 0 for 2. 6-10. That's a fly ball center field X, and that is Mumphrey. He's a 3-E7. 3 and a 9 is a good play. E7 and a 12. E7 and a 12 is okay. Not a problem. No error. So nicely done out there by Mumphrey. But the Tigers, thanks to the double by Trammell and a, and a fielder's choice ground out by Lemon, have taken the lead 2-1 to one as we go to the 6th. So Jack Morris given that one run lead to protect. And he'll be facing Nettles, Smalley, and Foot here in the top of the 6th. Nettles is 1 for 2. 5-12 against a lefty. Ground ball first base X. That is Cabell. He's a 3-E14. 3-20 is good all day long. E14 and a 13. Let's see what happens with that. E14 and a 13. There's a 12, but there's no 13, so it's good play. In fact, that'll be Cabell flipping to Morris covering for out number one. And here is Roy Smalley. I do that on X charts to first base. I do 3-1 versus a 3 unassisted. Just doesn't really matter. There's no official thing to it. Just kind of my preference. All right, here's Smalley. 112, and that's a base hit for Roy Smalley. One out single. He's not really, you know, we're not even going to hold Smalley. He's, he runs pretty much like a catcher, so we're gonna, not even going to hold him on. We'll do the Havoc. Nothing happening. Here's Barry Foote. 211 for Foote is a foul out to the catcher. So he fouls out to Wackenfuss for out number two. And now it's up to Dave Collins to get it done. Nothing on the Havoc. 4-9 for Collins against Morris. And he hits the sweet spot. 1-17 to is a home run. That's a 6 he does have normal power. That is a two-run homer for Dave Collins. And the Yankees have reclaimed the lead 3-2. to two. Number nine hitter Dave Collins with a two-run bomb. And Collins only had three homers on the year, but he found one right there. And he took care of it. Against righties, he does have normal power. Weak against lefties, but normal against righties. So, home run. Yankees lead it 3-2. to two. Yeah, That kind of rocked Sparky Anderson and the Tigers a little bit. Here's Willie Randolph. All that with two outs, too. 4-4. Four, four. And that's going to be a ground ball shortstop back. That's Trammell. He's a 1, so we know he's going to get to it. We're just checking for an error. He's an E-17. E-17. Ooh, E-17 and a 15. Could be, could be trouble. E-17. A 15 is an error. 15 and 16 are both errors. So that's an E-6. As Trammell boots it, the boot by Trammell, first error of the game for the Tigers. Trammell boots that ball. Now, Randolph does have a good chance to get a jump, two through six, to get a jump. And he does get, but it's a chance for a pickoff as well, because that one there. His secondary roll is a 12. If it's a 12 or less, he gets back. 13 or higher, he gets picked off. And they pick him off, so Jack Morris picks off Willie Randolph trying to get too cute over there. But the Yankees do strike with a two-run homer from Dave Collins. And we go to the bottom of the six. It's three to two Yankees. And now they've got to come back against Tommy John. John will be facing Herndon, Wackenfuss, and Brookins for the Tigers. Herndon's 0 for 2. 5-9, ground ball to short, he's 0-3. Herndon is out of there. Here's John Wackenfuss, the catcher. 
He played a little bit everywhere. He played first base, played right field, left field, and third base, and also did some DHing. 5 4 for Tommy John. Ground ball third base X. That is Nettles. Nettles is a 3 E35. 3 to 9. 3 to 9 is a good play. He gets to that. That's a 10, and he's an E35. And there is no 10. There's an 11, 12, 13, and 14, but there's no 10. So a good play for Nettles. Two down for Tommy Brookins. Tom Brookins. 6-7 against Tommy John, and that's a ground ball second base X. Looking at Randolph. He's a 2-E17. 2-10, he'll get to that. E17 and a 13 is no problem. So Randolph makes the play. Three ground outs, and we go to the seventh. Still three to two Yankees. As they're trying to knock off Jack Morris and the Tigers. Jerry Mumphrey to lead it off here in the top of the seventh. And, of course, he had that big triple back in the third. Score the first Yankee run. 2-5 for Mumphrey. He's gonna, he might triple again. In fact, he did triple again. That's a 5. 1-11 to is a triple. Second triple of the game for Jerry Mumphrey. He's had a huge day, and now the Tigers are going to have to play the infield in. They, can't, they don't want to give up another cheap run. They're going to have to play the infield in. Down by one. Havoc roll, nothing happening. Here's Griffey with the infield in. 5-12. Ground ball first base X. First baseman is Cabell. He's a 3-E-14. 3 and a 17. Let's check and see what that what that does. 3 and a 17 is a G1, and that's a 7, and he is an E14. No 7. So we come over here to the X chart for a G1 with the runner on third and the infield in. It says batter. So over here, it says batter's out, runner holds. So by playing the infield in, they held the runner. And normally I do a 3-1 to one ground out, but with the infield in, he's right by the bag, so we'll just make it 3-G. All right, here's Bobby Mercer. Infield still in. Jack Morris with the Havoc. Nothing happening. So Morris to Mercer. 2-8 for Mercer. Pops him up to second base. And that won't get it done either as Whitaker puts it away for two down. So Morris trying to pitch around that leadoff triple. Two outs, infield back to their normal positions for Dave Revering. One chance for a wild pitch. Don't tell me he's going to wild pitch in the run after fighting off this leadoff triple. One to eight's a wild pitch. Nope, 18. It's blocked by Walkenfuss, so he got in front of it. Whoops, that red die did not go through. Somehow it overshot the boundary there. So, let's redo this. 4-8 against the lefty. Ground ball to second. That's going to end the inning. He escaped that 4-9. So, 4-8 worked. And Morris pit pitches around the leadoff triple. We go to the seventh inning stretch. Still Yankees 3, Tigers 2. This is the fatigue inning for Tommy John. So, we're going to keep track of that. Len Wilson will be the leadoff man for the Tigers. Wilson's one for two. Four nine. Four nine's a single. Leadoff single for Glenn Wilson. He's not really a threat to steal, but he will be held on. Here's Trammell. Trammell had a big double his last time up. Havoc roll. Nothing happening. Five ten. And that's a ballpark single check against the it's a one to seven. That's a two. So it will be a single. And now the first two are on with nobody out. And Lou Whitaker, the batter, he's a B bunter. So he's going to be up there trying to bunt the runners into scoring position. Turns into a C bunter. So we'll see how this plays out. C bunter and a nine. C bunter and a nine is one and two. So there's a one ball, two strike count on. Whitaker, do you keep the bunt on or do you let him swing away? 
think they're going to change it up and let him swing away. Five, six. Fly ball center field B. That'll be good enough for a set. No, it won't be because the runner's on second, not on third. My bad. So fly to center. One away. So unable to get the bunt down. That kind of hurt him there. Here's Chet Lemon. Nothing on that. John DeLemon, 2-4. Ground ball shortstop A. It's a 6-4-3 double play. How do you like that? Tommy John, when he needs a double play grounder, he finds the ability to, to induce one. And we've completed seven here at Tiger Stadium. It's the Yankees 3 and the Tigers 2. This will be Jack Morris's fatigue inning, inning number 8. And he'll be facing Nettles to start the inning. Nettles is 1 for 3. 4-4, four, four. that's a ground ball shortstop X. That's Trammell. He's a 1, so you know he's going to get to it. We're checking for error on an E17 and an 11. I think that'll be okay. Yep, E17 and 11 is fine. Trammell makes the play. One down for Roy Smalley. 2-9 for Smalley. That's a ball. That's not a ballpark. That's a straight-out single. No clutch, just a straight-out single. So Smalley is on. He will not be held because he's just like Barry Foote. He's very slow. Slow a foot, as they say. Oops, I'm going to roll too many dice there. Not bad. Nothing happened on the Havoc. Morris to foot. 1-9 for foot. Struck him out. Barry Foote strikes out for out number two. And now it's up to Dave Collins. He had the big two-run homer his last time up. Found, I believe, that 4-9 spot on Jack Morris. Roll for the Havoc. Nothing happening. 4-4. Four, four. This time it's a ground ball shortstop X. And that's Trammell. He's a 1, so we know he's going to get to it. There's already two outs, so we're not trying for a double play. Just checking his error rating. And that's a 7. E17 and a 7. No problem whatsoever. Doesn't matter if he goes a short way or the first. I'm not counting defensive stats, so... Keep it simple. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Still three to two Yankees. Tommy John back out. He's given up two hits, so he's got to be careful about his fatigue. It's getting close. Yankees do have the goose. Goose Gossage in the bullpen. And he would be coming on if Tommy John runs into any issues whatsoever. Of course, the goose had many outings where he pitched more than one inning for a save, so that's nothing new. Not like today's closers, who... Can't handle it. Here's Tommy John to Enos Cabell. 6-8. And that's trouble for Tommy John. 1-9 to is a triple. That's a 14, though, so it's going to just be a single. But it does put the tie and run. It does put the tie and run in scoring position. And Enos Cabell is looking to get a jump. 3 through 6, he will get that jump. 8, he does not. So he has to hold. Brings up Kirk Gibson. And one more base runner, and Tommy John will be fatigued. 2-8 for Gibson. Ground ball first base speed. It's a fielder's choice. 3-6. to six. As Reverend throws to Smalley for the force. Kirk Gibson now the new runner at first. He can get a jump on a lot of situations. 2 through 9 or a 12 gets him a jump. 10 or 11, he gets automatically out. That's a 6, so he's going to get the jump. He starts as a 15, and we know that con conglomerate of the pitcher and catcher is a minus 1, makes him a 14. Being held makes him a 12. 1 to 12, he gets he, get, he will steal it. And Tanny's in there, stolen base for Kirk Gibson. So he's in scoring position with one out for Larry Herndon. And now do you bring in the goose, or do you let Tommy John try to pitch his way out of it? I think they're going to go to the bullpen. They're going to bring in the Goose. They're going to bring in Goose Gossage. Got a Hall of Famer reliever. You got to use him. So Goose Gossage is going to come on for Tommy John. And try to get out of this mess. Runner at second, which is the tie and run. And one out. And the Goose is on. And in the 82 season, Gossage was 4-5 and five with a 2-2-3 ERA and 30 saves. But he's also got a lot of strikeouts, and he could really use one right about now. 
Havoc roll. Nothing happening. Here's Herndon now. Did they let Herndon pit, uh, hit or do they pinch hit with a lefty? I think they're going to stick with Herndon. 1-6. Fly ball to center. That's two down. And that will send us two. Now let's see. That was a question mark. I don't know if, there's, if the runner can get from second on that. I think it's just for, for right field. I don't know if it's for center field or not. To double check the ruling just to make sure I'm not overlooking anything. Let's see here. <clears throat> no, right field only. So the fly ball to center had no effect on that. So he had to hold. And here's Walkenfuss. Now they're going to pinch hit for Walkenfuss. Walkenfuss is being called back. And we will get a pinch hitter for, and Lance Parrish will come in to catch in the ninth inning. But right now they need a pinch hitter. And they're going to turn to Richie Hebner, a lefty off the bench. So Richie Hebner will pinch hit, and then Lance Parrish will come on to catch for Wackenfuss. So if we put in the numbers for Parrish defensively, he is a 2, minus 3, E4, T7, pass ball 4. But right now it is Richie Hebner, the pinch hitter. Richie Hebner pinch hitting in a big spot right here against Goose Gossett. Two outs, a runner at second. Nothing on the habit. Gossett to Hebner, 1-7. Struck him out. So Gossett strikes out Hebner to end the inning. And for all those second guessers out there, walking Fuss on a 1-7 would have walked. And the inning would have continued. But got to try to play the percentages, I do believe. All right, so that's going to do it for the Tigers, and that means Lance Parrish will come in and catch. And now we go to the top of the ninth. Morris is still okay to pitch if they want to keep him in there, or they could go to the bullpen. They got Randolph, Mumphrey, and Griffey. Got some lefties coming up, or at least a couple of lefties with Mercer and Griffey coming up as well. So I think they may go to the bullpen. And they're going to go to Kevin Saucier, or Saucier. Saucier, however you pronounce it. The only lefty in the bullpen. He's 3-1 and one with a 3.12 ERA and five saves. So he will be on, and he'll be facing the top of the order in Randolph, Mumphrey, and Griffey. A right-hander, a switch hitter, and a lefty. And then, of course, Gossage will remain in the ninth for the Yankees to try to save it. So here's Saucier to Randolph. He's one for four, singled and reached on an error. Got picked off first bases last time. 3-8 for Randolph. He will fly to left. One away. He's going to send us to Jerry Mumphrey, and he's much. He's usually a better hitter against righties than he is lefties. So I was also the thought of bringing the lefty in because of that. 2-8, but he did walk against the lefty, so that maybe backfired just a tad. He's not going to try to get a jump, I don't believe. Parrish is now in the game as a minus three. That's Parrish. He's a minus three, plus one for Sosha is a minus two. Oh, you know what? They may try it. Let's see if he can get a jump. He needs a six, though. It's the only way he can do it is get a six. And he did not, so that's a moot point. We go to Griffey, lefty on lefty. 410, and that's a ground ball shortstop X. Now, Trammell's a one, but he is responsible for holding the runner on with Griffey, the lefty, at the plate, so he drops to a two. So he's a two E17. Two and an 18, though, is still going to be good enough for a double play, as long as there's no error. There's a 10. I don't think there's an error on that. 17 and a 10. Nope, it's good all day long. So that will be a 6 4 3 double play to end the top of the ninth. So Saucier does his job, or Saucier does his job. Keeps the Tigers close. But it's 3-2 Yankees as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Goose Gossage is on. He's only He hasn't given up anything yet, so he's still good to go as far as that goes. Tigers may be looking to go to the bench for some hitters. Tom Brookins will be called back. And Howard Johnson will pinch hit for Brookins and would stay in the game to play third base if it gets to that. But he's a much better hitter than Brookins is. Hojo, Howard Johnson. 
So Hojo will lead things off, and then after Hojo, there's Glenn Wilson, a righty. He's a good hitter. I don't think you're going to take him out. They do have Jerry Turner on the bench, but he's only a 248 hitter. So I think you're going to just... Hojo's going to be the only pinch hitter in this inning, I do believe. All right, so we've got Hojo, Glenn Wilson, and Alan Tram will do up against Gossage here in the bottom of the ninth, 3-2 Yankees. 5-10. That's a ballpark single. That's a three, so that's a base hit for Howard Johnson. Pinch hit single for Hojo as he pinch hits and gets the job done. 5-10, had we left Brookings in there, would have been a strikeout on Gossage's card, so... Good thing they had the lefty in there. Hojo, actually is a decent runner. He stole seven bases, got caught four times. So two through seven, he gets a jump. Nine or nine, he gets a jump. But let's look at the totals here. Minus one for Gossage. Minus one for foot, minus two. Being held, minus two, that's a minus four. It'd be a one to 11 if he got the jump. So I think they're going to hold him up there. I think they're going to play it safe and try to depend on their batters to get the job done. Glenn Wilson steps to the plate. We'll roll for the Havoc. Nothing happening. Gossage to Wilson. 4-6, struck him out. So Wilson is out of there. That brings up Alan Trammell. Gossage to Trammell. Nothing on the Havoc. 2-4 for Trammell. That's a ballpark single check again, but that's a 7, and that's all they need. 1-7 to seven's a hit. So two ballpark singles off of Gossage's card, and he's not happy about it. But now the runners are at first and second. The tying run is in scoring position at second base, and he will be held there at second. Try to minimize that lead. And here's Lou Whitaker. He could be the hero of the game with some ninth inning magic, as they say. Gossage to Whitaker. 1-4, but it's a ground ball, second base A. It's a 4-6-3 double play. Randolph to Smalley to Revering, and the ball game is over. Goose Gossage not, doesn't get the strikeout to end the game. He gets a double play. So how about that? But the Yankees win it by the score of 3-2. 3-2 Yankees as they defeat the Tigers. Big blow, a two-run homer from Dave Collins. He is the player of the game for the Yankees with his two-run homer in the top of the sixth. Gave the Yankees the lead they never relinquished. And the Yankees do it. So, so far, the first two games, the visiting team has won the day. This one, a much cleaner game than the, than the first game was. But you never know how things really are going to work out. Uh, like I said, now, I know that the San Diego LA game from April 10th and this game from April 17th were the play, the game of the week games on NBC. April 24th, I'm not sure. I don't have that information. So all I'm going to do is go to the Baseball America website, or Baseball Reference website, rather, find all the games that were played on a Saturday afternoon and pick what I think might have been the game of the week or what appears to maybe be the most compelling game of the week. And then we'll see how it plays out. But I'm not really sure which one it was. But I'll look at the schedule and figure it out. And on Saturday, we'll be doing the third game, which will be the April 24th game, as we try to creep closer to getting in sync with the 2021 calendar year and the 1982 baseball season on the Saturdays. So that's going to do it from here. Hope you enjoyed that presentation of Stratomatic 1982 style game of the week. Again, Yankees. Foil Jack Morris and the Tigers, 3-2. to two. Winning pitcher Tommy John, loser Jack Morris, and the save to Goose Gossage. Till next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it, and I will see you all down the road.